Kia ora team, welcome back. This is video 4 in our 2.6 video series. Today's lesson is about stratification. Now I'm whispering because it's about 5am on a Saturday and people in my home are sleeping. So in this lesson you're learning about the Podocarf broadleaf forest, the five strata that make up a stratified forest, and why stratification is important. By the end of the lesson you should be able to describe the Podocarf broadleaf forest community, explain the physical conditions in each of the five strata, and discuss why stratification happens and why it's important. So New Zealand has two types of native forests, Podocarf broadleaf forest and beech forests. For the purposes of this achievement standard, we'll solely be focusing on Podocarp broadleaf forests because that's the type of forest we will be visiting on our field trip. So what's a Podocarp broadleaf forest? It's a very dense forest that contains podocarp trees and broadleaf trees, among others. Podocarp trees are like rimu and kaikatea that have narrow scale-like leaves. They don't have flowers or fruit, but instead they produce brightly coloured seed cones to attract birds. If birds eat these seed cones, they will distribute the seeds throughout the forest through their poop. Broadleaf trees, like kohe kohe, Rata, Niko, Karaka are flowering trees. They produce bright coloured fruits that birds are attracted to, so this is how their seeds are distributed, and like their name describes, their leaves are broad. Forests throughout the world show stratification, which is a pattern of vertical layering in a forest community. New Zealand's podocarp broadleaf forests are no ex exception. They are known to have five distinct vertical layers the emergent, canopy, subcanopy, shrub, and ground layers. This is a diagram that clearly shows the five layers of a stratified forest in New Zealand. There's the ground layer, shrub layer, subcanopy layer, canopy layer, and emergent layer. Now just note that these numbers in red are just estimates of the heights of these layers. The emergent layer is the layer found furthest from the ground. Trees in this layer of the forest are exposed to full sun. This means they get full light intensity and very high temperatures. Trees are also exposed to full wind strength because there's nothing covering them. Because this layer is exposed to full sun and full wind, the humidity levels are very low. Examples of trees found in this layer are Rimu and Kahikatea. These trees are called emergents because they grow through and above the trees in the canopy layer. The canopy layer. The canopy layer is the layer below the emergent layer and is the second furthest from the ground. This layer is usually sheltered by trees in the emergent layer, so they're not as fully exposed to the sun or full wind strength. So trees in this layer experience high light intensity, high temperatures and high wind strength but low humidity. Examples of trees found in this layer are Niko, Kohe Kohe, and pigeon wood. Now, epiphytes are a type of plant found in the canopy or emergent strata. Strata is another word for layer. An epiphyte is a plant that grows on another plant. The plant it grows on is called the host. The epiphyte seeds get pooped onto tree trunks and branches by birds, and that is where the seeds Germinate. Germinate just means where the seeds start growing. Epiphytes need high light intensity to establish and grow. That's why those seeds that land on the canopy or emergent strata do best. An example of an epiphyte that you'll see throughout Arataki is the perching lily. That's likely to be on a rimu tree. A different type of epiphyte is a tree epiphyte like the northern rata. Like the perching lily, northern rata seeds get pooped onto tree trunks and branches by birds, and the seeds germinate. But then things get interesting. Eventually the northern rata's roots grow down the tree trunk of the host tree, and develops a massive root system around the host tree. After many many years, the host tree succumbs to the strangulation and dies. And at this point, the northern rata is able to stand on its own. Of note, it's possible for northern rata seeds to germinate on the ground, but it's more common for it to start life as an epiphyte. In contrast to epiphytes, 
climbing vines like the climbing rata, germinate on the ground and grow up large trees like rimu, using it like a ladder. When the stems reach full sunlight, they form a bush growth of branches that extend away from the host tree. Climbing rata are quite different to northern rata in that they don't kill the host tree. The subcanopy layer. The subcanopy layer is the layer below the canopy, and the third layer furthest from the ground. Trees in the subcanopy layer have dense foliage, dense leaves, that shelter the subcanopy layer from the sun and wind. Therefore, the trees in the subcanopy layer experience medium light intensity, medium temperatures, medium wind strength, and medium humidity. Examples of trees found in this layer are mahoi, karaka, brown tree ferns and the silver tree fern, as well as young um, canopy and emergent trees. The shrub layer. The shrub layer is the second layer closest to the ground. The foliage of trees from the layers above it greatly shelter the shrub layer from sun and wind. Therefore, trees in the shrub layer experience low light intensity, low temperatures, low wind strength and high humidity. If you've ever been on a bushwalk around the Waitakere Ranges, you'll notice it's quite shaded, cool, still and pretty humid. Examples of plants found in this layer are karamu, kanono and hangihangi, as well as seedlings and young trees and tree ferns. And finally, the ground layer. The ground layer is the layer closest to the ground. It's very sheltered from the elements, so plants in this layer experience very low light intensity, very low temperature, very low wind, and very high humidity. In this layer, you'll mostly see moss and ground ferns. You'll also see plenty of seedlings, which are young plants grown from seeds, because this strata provides the low light intensity and that damp, cool, humid habitat that's suitable for the germination, the growth, of seeds. In this picture, you can see a high density of seedlings, like Nico seedlings that look like grass, as well as seedlings from emergent trees like Kahikatiya and Rimu. The seeds that these seedlings have grown from were dispersed by birds like the Kereru and Tui. This is a table that summarizes the physical conditions and examples of each plant species inhabiting each strata or each forest layer. As you can see, each strata or each forest layer has a different set of physical conditions or abiotic factors, and therefore each layer is a different habitat for different species of plants to occupy. The main physical condition controlling the distribution of plants in the different strata is light. Plants in the emergent and canopy layers receive high light intensity, and the plants in the lower strata receive less and less light intensity. Here's the table in larger print. You're probably wondering why I keep repeating the scientific um, names of each species right here. I keep repeating it in brackets because for your internal you have to include the scientific names of each tree species or each animal species you mention in your report. So why does stratification occur? Stratification occurs because tall plants in the canopy and emergent layers filter the sun and shelter from the wind, causing a drop in temperature and increase in humidity for the lower layers. This forms different microclimates or different physical conditions in each of the strata below, creating many niches that different species of plants can occupy. Trees in the emergent layer have adaptations to thrive in that very high light intensity niche. And plants in the shrub layer have a different set of adaptations to help them thrive in that low light intensity niche. So now that we know that light causes stratification of the forest, you're probably wondering why is stratification so important and why do we even need to study it? The stratification pattern increases the number of species in a forest community and therefore increases biodiversity. Biodiversity is the variety of plant and animal life in one place. Stratification increases the biodiversity of the forest community because by increasing the number of niches available and therefore reducing competition between different species, which relates back to Gauss's competitive exclusion principle. Because remember that Gauss's principle states that two different species with similar ecological niches 
can't stably coexist in the same habitat. For example, Rimu trees in the emergent layer don't have to compete with kanono plants in the shrub layer because they occupy different niches. A forest community with many vertical layers is more complex and has greater biodiversity because it can have more plant and animal species in it, and therefore be a more complex ecosystem. If one of the layers were lost, it will make other layers vulnerable. For example, if pests like possums browse too much foliage of canopy trees, too much light, too much heat, and too much wind will reach the forest floor. And this will mean that the forest floor will become less humid. Plants on the forest floor like mosses, ferns, and seedlings will not be adapted to these changed conditions, and they're likely to shrivel up and die if exposed to full sun, full wind, and little humidity. So let's check your understanding. Question one, how many strata or layers are there in a podocarp broadleaf forest? A, one, B, two, C, three, D, four, and E, five. Question two, name this tree. A, Northern Rata, B, Rimu Seedling, C, Nico, D, Perching Lily. This kanono shrub can grow up to six meters high. Question three, which strata will you find this adult kanono? A, emergent, B, canopy, C, subcanopy, D, shrub, and E, ground. Kahikatea seeds germinate on the forest floor to produce a seedling. Question four, what conditions do Kaikatiya seeds need to be able to germinate? A. Very high light intensity, very high temperature, very high wind, and very low humidity. B. High light intensity, high temperature, high wind, and low humidity. C. Medium light intensity, medium temperature, medium wind, and medium humidity. D. Low light intensity, low temperature, low wind and high humidity, and E, very low light intensity, very low temperature, very low wind, and very high humidity. Remember we're talking about the seeds here. Question five, what could happen if all emergent and canopy trees died due to excessive browsing by possums and rats? There's more than one correct answer. A, biodiversity would decrease. B. The number of stratolators would decrease. C. The number of niches available will decrease. D. There will be more interspecific competition. Brackets. Gauze's competitive exclusion principle. E. The physical conditions in each strata would change. You've reached the end of the video, so by now you should be able to describe the protocarp broadleaf forest community, explain the physical conditions in each of the five strata, and discuss why stratification happens and why it's important. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.